Hello and welcome to this tutorial on switch configuration for connecting Cisco IP phones. So by now we know that switches can connect to routers, they can connect to other switches, and all sorts of different types of end devices like servers. Well, they can also connect to Cisco IP phones and this is becoming more and more common as voice technologies progress. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the IP phone itself and believe it or not that's my drawing of a phone so the IP phone does something different than your standard phone what happens is IP sending for internet protocol kinda gives you a hint basically the IP phone will use IP for both signaling like call control how do I set up a call how do I manage the call while it's happening how do I tear that call down when I'm done and also for the voice traffic itself. In other words, your voice and my voice when we talk and have a conversation. All of that now becomes packetized and it's sent across a network just like any other type of data on a network. So if, if you're looking at the two types of traffic, they're both just IP packets now, both regular voice traffic and regular data traffic from, say, your, your, your desktop. Okay, so that's that's uh, that's the IP phone, and we'll connect it to this switch. Now, a couple things happen here. First, a Cisco uh, IP phone can be powered by the switch itself. You might have heard of this. It's called Power Over Ethernet, or PoE. If the switch is capable of performing this function, then you don't have to actually plug the IP phone into a wall, which is pretty convenient. Also, the IP phone has a little switch built into the back of it. And on that switch, there's actually a data port. And this is pretty cool. It allows you to connect a computer, I'll just draw a laptop here, to the back of your Cisco phone. So this uh, has a couple benefits as well you're actually saving on switch ports over here because you're not using another one for the PC and also if you're in a busy office environment or a very dense one with a lot of people you don't have to provision as many data jacks in cubicles or offices it's um, it's a more efficient way to go about physically connecting to the network okay so this is what we're gonna be talking about and this is what you find uh, commonly now in a lot of office spaces so there are some unique switch configurations and concerns you might have guessed that come along with this. Now, the first one is it's generally considered a best practice to put your voice traffic and your regular PC data traffic into different VLANs. That gives you more control. You can separate the VLANs further down the line in the network. You can treat them differently in routing. Um, you know, your voice traffic is very sensitive. If you start dropping packets, all of a sudden, you know, you'll start noticing that in the voice call itself. The, f the call could drop or bits of words could drop out. Um, if you ever experience a bad cell phone call, it could be just like that. So by separating your traffic, you have more opportunity to manage both the voice traffic and the data traffic better. This means we need to implement some special configurations on the switch. So what we're going to do is we'll create one VLAN, we'll say VLAN 4, for all of the IP phone traffic, all of your voice traffic. And then we'll configure another VLAN, we'll make it VLAN 5, for the data traffic. So we're going to have two VLANs con configured for these two devices and they're going to be on the same port. Now you're thinking, oh well this is just going to look like a regular trunk and in fact it's not. This is going to be different than your standard trunk configurations that we've covered already. By the way, I'm choosing voice VLAN or rather VLAN 4 for our voice, you can choose any VLAN you want. It doesn't have to be 4. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump on a switch and take a look at what we have to do. We are at the command line on switch A and we'll take a look at the status of FA010. That's where I have my Cisco IP phone connected. You can see it's connected, it's in VLAN 1 and it's negotiated duplex and speed and let's take a look at the interface configuration as well 
And really, it's just it's just a basic access port, and there's a description on there, and that's it, really. Some spanning tree port fast command. So let's jump into configuration mode, and we have to go into the interface. These are both sub uh, interface commands that we're going to be entering. The first one we know already, and this is for our data VLAN for the PC. All we have to do is our standard access port configuration, switch port access VLAN 5. Pretty simple. The next command is going to be a lot different than anything we've looked at so far. Switch port voice VLAN and we decided we were going to use VLAN number 4. That's the command which is going to tell the interface that VLAN 4 is used for our voice traffic. And this is also relayed to the phone via CDP messages. So the phone and the switch actually talk to each other and that's how they exchange information. If you haven't yet, check out the CDP tutorial in the ICND1 material. So we'll enter that and then let's jump out of configuration mode and take a look at our new interface configuration. We have the switch port access VLAN 5 and the switch port voice VLAN 4. What we've done here, when you enter that switch port voice VLAN 4 command, that actually creates a pseudo trunk on the interface because we're now um, exchanging traffic with the phone in more than one VLAN. So it doesn't look like a trunk because we don't have any trunk commands in there, but it's actually functioning like one. It's a little sneaky. In fact, if we issue the show interface uh, switch port command, you'll see here it's, it's, it's saying that it's configured as a static access port, which is true, but it's also operating like one as well. Well, that's technically not correct. However, we do have some inf useful information here. We can see the access mode. We can figure out VLAN 5 is our data VLAN. And look at this. Now it says voice VLAN 4. So we can figure out quite easily from this command which VLAN is our voice VLAN. Now here's a little trick. If you do want to figure out, you know, is this in fact functioning properly, one good way to look at this is the uh, show spanning tree interface command. And on this, you can see we are actually passing both VLANs over this. So it gives us an indication that a trunk is, in fact, functioning on this interface to the phone, uh, even though it doesn't look like it from the switch. Okay, and that's how simple it is to configure a switch port for a Cisco IP phone. So to summarize what we covered, we have these two configuration commands. One is a repeat. Uh, we've covered it before, the access VLAN. The new one here is the voice VLAN command. And remember, we want to separate our voice and data traffic. And that's why we're doing this. Also, this switch port voice VLAN command, even though it's not obvious from the switch, it actually creates a trunk. And the, the switch port actually functions as a trunk and it kind of makes sense if you think about it because we have more than one VLAN on that switch port even though the switch says it might be functioning and configured as your standard access port. Okay, so that's it. That is how to configure a switch port for a Cisco IP phone. Thanks for watching.